Hello, fellow Earth prisoners. Welcome. I am Ronnie the Wizard, and this is my couch. Um, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently this time around. I'm obviously sitting in front of a camera, talking into a microphone, so uh, bear with me. Things are going to be a little wonky in this video. I, uh, this is my first time. I'm working scriptless, and we are just going to go for it. As I was researching this album, it occurred to me that it seemed a bit redundant to break down each individual song in what is basically an audiobook. So instead of that, I am going to just tell you guys a shortened version of what this story is, because it was really confusing to me listening to it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again while never actually looking it up and researching it, trying to figure it out on my own. Um, granted, if you're watching this this is you looking it up not watching it or trying to figure it out on your own but we'll pretend i didn't have that realization right now eyes like this guy opens up the album and it tells us that it's going to be taking place in early united states shortly after the civil war we are going to be following a man who is not described very well in the first song the only details we get about him are that the bad white men call him the devil and the yavapai call him eyes like the sky so we know that it's going to roughly take place between cowboys and indians but we get more details in the next song so let's move on in year of our lord we are introduced to two uh yavapai apache indian scouts who have been waiting at a farmhouse for nearly a day and they have discovered that in the farmhouse uh, there reside three men, one woman, and a young child. During the song, we get the information that the Yavapai do not have much information on uh, American or Mexican men, um, but what they do know is that they're not fond of Mexican men in particular because of their cruelty. I didn't write this story. I, did, I had nothing to do with the opinions expressed in this story. By the end of the song, the two scouts separate, one returning back to his group to notify them that the farmhouse is worthy of a raid, and the second one stays. Moving on. During the raid, we get a little bit more detail into the rhyme and reason of the raid. We learn in a dark twist that the Yavapai are not raiding the farmhouse in an effort to acquire... Uh, provisions or food rations or anything of the nature like that. What they are actually after are guns and children. And being that there is a young boy in this camp, that is what they're after. So during the raid, they go in and they kill the men and they kill the woman dispassionately and they wind up taking the five-year-old Miguel O'Brien. Uh, this happens in 1854. In the next song, Drum Run, we get to listen to the sounds of Miguel growing up for the next about 10 years. It kind of works like the montage scene in the Disney Tarzan movie where Tarzan goes from being a little kid to a young adult. It is described how Miguel learns to run without leaving tracks. He learns to basically be a Yavapai Indian, and by the end of it, ten years later, he has earned the name Eyes Like the Sky, he has killed Mexican troopers, and fears no man. Seems like a pretty cool 15 year old if you ask me. Evil Man takes place about a year later when Miguel is 16 years old. He walks outside one day and he is greeted with a rifle butt to the face, knocking him unconscious. When he awakes, he learns that his Yavapai family have been slaughtered and they were slaughtered in the name of God by a man and his soldiers who bears a book bound in leather with a uh, cross stamped into the leather. So this man came in uh, and claiming to be doing the work of God did some atrocious things. Yeah, so he's not super great. He's 
probably the namesake of the song evil man but i don't want to jump to conclusions when miguel wakes up he finds himself bound and alive and he learns that the reason for this is because the soldiers recognized that he had blue eyes which was not something ever really found in apaches so they knew that he was not one of them but rather probably somebody who had gone missing when they were younger and this was now an opportunity to take them back to civilization yeah once again miguel's family had been slaughtered but this time by americans which has got to do gnarly things to your psyche Miguel is taken to a place called Fort Whipple, which is basically just a glorified group of tents. And the man in charge there is called Willis. And Willis, uh, upon seeing Miguel and seeing his blue eyes, asks the guy that I'm just going to call the evil man. He asks the evil man, hey, what do you suppose is up with that dude's eyes? It's actually really interesting because the evil man uh, really guesses correctly the very first time and suggests that it might be Miguel O'Brien, that one boy that went missing. But he also suggests that it could be someone from someone called the Jebson's party. So he winds up with the name Jebson O'Brien when he is reunited with his people. So Miguel becomes Jebson, but I'm just going to keep calling him Miguel. One thing that could be noted in this song is when Miguel is brought back to Fort Whipple, he is not the only one brought back to Fort Whipple. The evil piece of crap person also brought back several Yavapai girls because he fancied himself some Yavapai girl. This song also goes on to describe how most of the men that Miguel would meet in the colony would typically stay away from him because he kind of just gave off this unapproachable vibe which would probably happen to you if if you had two families that were murdered and you were the only survivor. Well not the only survivor but yeah not great. So, there is one trapper who notices his skills and decides to kind of take him under his wing and shows him how to be an American. He teaches them the language and before long Miguel is able to speak, write, read, uh, as well as he became a very notable uh, gunman. To the point where people would be very careful not to upset him because when they did, it usually wound up being a fatal mistake. So by the time this guy was 17, he was feared among most of the people that were around him. Which, not me. Not me at 17. The Godman's Goat Lust. Uh, this song is one of those songs that I'm not going to go too into detail on because it's got, it's got some, of the, some of the bad stuff in it. But it does have one really good part where Miguel decides to escort the bad man into hell like Karen across the river Styx, and it's an unfortunate song, but it has a good ending. So basically what happens in that is um, after killing the evil dude, Miguel is kind of on the run with a Yavapai girl, and the killing ground is a song that describes a long trek through the desert that they are taking. Uh, one that is so long that they walk their horses to death, taking their meat and stuff to eat later, eventually stumbling upon a quote-unquote killing ground where they have found basically a, a the leftover... When they get there, it's still going on. They can tell because of the dust and the birds uh, off in the distance. But they decide to wait a day, and then when they go, they learn that the battle that had ensued was uh, white men fighting white men dressed up like Yavapai Indians. So we have... For some reason, a group of white men that decided to dress up like Yavapai Indians and go attack other white men, possibly in a means to steal from them, possibly in a means to scare them. Uh, either way, it was basically a bloodbath of uh, people killing people for no reason.
since Dust in the Wind and Guns and Horses are kind of a two-parter, I think I can get away with pairing them together and just talking about them as one. And basically what happens in the two songs is that Miguel and the Yavapai girl get ambushed by three men with guns and horses. The girl is immediately shot in the head, leaving Miguel to defend himself. Good old Miguel isn't going to go down without a fight, and... Without giving away too many spoiler details, uh, he winds up leaving three men, two men, with three legs. Yeah. Yeah, do that math. He winds up stealing their horses, stealing their guns, and making his way to a Yavapai encampment that is about a half a day away that he knows the whereabouts of. So he is on his way to that by the end of the album with the promise of a full stomach of deer meat and yavapai alcohol and he is quite content by the end of the album to really just soak up the agony of the men that he just left he gets joy out of that rather than anything else because every other good thing that he's ever had in his life has turned dead that's pretty much the end of that album so what have i gathered from listening to this album that i did not gather previously i will tell you humans are garbage to each other let that sink in because some people need to hear it and i know some people already know that but they still do it because we all do it i do it too i'm not a good person i try my best but humans treat humans like garbage that is my takeaway from this album all of these albums so far, uh, in terms of the Gizverse, have kind of been giving us a brief window into the functionality of humanity before what happens happens. And by what happens happens, I mean eventually we know that in this Gizverse there are going to be cyborgs that take over, and they do so basically with the understanding that humans are garbage. And I think this is one of the first albums that really goes into detail and explains one of the many facets of our garbageness and one of the reasons why it would be okay if we were replaced. Anyway, this is a very, very interesting album for me. I really, really enjoy it having gone through and listened to it. I don't necessarily think that it's one of those things that has a lot of gravity and weight to the Gizverse. Obviously, it came out a long time ago and not a lot of people talk about it but i'm gonna i'm gonna post this video and i hope one person watches it and gets something out of it yeah so that was all of that and in conclusion thank you very much for stopping by the video i'm sorry that it's all over the place and garbage i'm sorry i got a lot of uhs and ums in there i'll try to edit those out so you guys don't have to suffer through them like I did. I did a lot of takes making this video, so if you guys enjoyed it, please let me know down in the comments that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Tell me what I could do better. Tell me what you guys would like to see in the future. If you like this video that much, I would really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like. If you did not like this video, hit that unlike button. Let me know. I'd love to know. Drop a comment, let me know what I can do better. Drop a comment, let me know what I'm doing great. And if you would be oh so kind as to give me one of those oh so glorious subscriptions, I would be very grateful. I want to please people. Help me please you, please. Next on the discography is going to be Float Along, Fill Your Lungs by King Giz. I'm really excited for this one. It's the first really psychedelic set list that they released. So we're gonna get to go in deep. See you next time.